Hey, Gen 1 Coyote guys, how much are CNC ported heads worth on the 5 liter 4 valve motor? Let's find out. Also, make sure to stick around to the end of the video. I'm cleaning out my storage area and I've got some Coyote stuff. In this video, we're going to compare a set of factory 5 liter Gen 1 Coyote heads to a set of CNC ported Gen 1 Coyote heads. Now, we know that the later Coyote heads flow very well, but how well does CNC porting affect the early Gen 1 Coyote? In addition to that, we also ran an intake test, both on the stock heads and on the CNC ported heads. We ran the factory intake, the early Gen 1 intake, and the Boss intake, again, both on the stock head and on the ported head. So was the intake upgrade worth more on the ported head or on the factory head? Let's find out. So before we can talk about the effect of ported cylinder heads on the Coyote, we obviously have to have a test motor, and, we, and I gotta tell you a little bit about it because what we test the heads on, the combination actually affects the gains offered by the heads. And this is true of any motor. If we were to run a set of big ported heads on the otherwise stock motor, they may do nothing at all or very little. But if you put them on a combination that needs the extra airflow, and the thing is, especially with the Coyote stuff, even a Gen 1 motor, which probably flows the least and, and, and makes the least amount of power of any of the generations in stock form, they're still really good heads and there's more than enough flow and the heads work well enough to easily support the factory power output. So as you start asking it to make more and more power with other modifications like headers and especially camshafts and intake manifolds and things like that, that's when they can really take advantage of the extra airflow offered by porting. So what we did is if you haven't taken a look at the other videos, please do take a look at the other Coyote videos. They'll tell you what happened before this because we ran this Gen 1 all the way we started this testing back in 2010 actually before the <laughs> i know that the the mustang is a 2011 but we started testing before that had come out we had a, a motor from ford so we did a bunch of testing with it and this thing worked out really well it made lots of power but if you look at those other videos you'll see what happened what this thing did stock and what it did with headers and what it did with a kenny bolt supercharger and nitrous and all kinds of stuff so you can see where we were and then where we've come to but i wanted to have a starting point obviously for this video so that we have we know where we started and then we know where we ended up so basically this was a gen 1 coyote it had a set of comp cams in this thing we had long tube headers in it but i'll go ahead and um we can take a look at the camshafts they're um comp nsr cams which stands for no springs required they were an na2h-126 uh f50c they're 492 453 lift split a 228 231 degree duration split for these cams so they're um kind of like a i would think that that would be like a stage two cam or something i know that people want to put designations on it but that's why i gave you the the actual specs but when we ran this motor with the cam and and with uh, all the tuning done on it it worked out very well this thing produced 497 horsepower and you can see it had a dual uh torque peak here 441 foot-pounds of torque with the cams and this was run actually with the factory airbox assembly um, because we ran this as a crate motor and then we ran it with our controls pack that the Ford Racing supplies but here's what happened when we put a basically a cold air intake as a JLT um, air intake assembly and replaced all the factory box and everything and then obviously we had to tune for that as well uh, both of these were optimized tunes. We couldn't get any more power out of the combination with the factory airbox. And then when we put the JLT on there, the power jumped up over 500 horsepower. It was 515 horsepower and 448 foot-pounds of torque. So that kind of brought us up to where we are. But the other thing that we did while we had this thing on the dyno, when, after we had installed the cams and we installed the JLT, is we put a Boss intake. So we replaced the factory Gen 1 kind of long runner intake manifold. So they're using that manifold to help the, the four valve Coyote, you know, have good torque production. But here's what happened when we put the Boss intake on with the cams. As you can see, it made a lot of P power. I wanted to rev out higher. I probably should have run this thing maybe a little bit higher. I think we ran it out to 73 or 7,400. It made 539 horsepower. But as you can see, between the red and the green here, it, the crossover was about 6,100 RPM. So everywhere below 6,100 RPM, the factory intake made more power. And everywhere above that, the boss intake manifold made more power. So... You know, <laughs> even before we ported the heads, you're still trying to pick uh, basically your effective operating range. Now, if you want to rev this thing to 8,000, obviously maybe a, a pump would be a good idea or change or something. But 
Um, if you want to run out there, the boss intake works fairly well. And there, obviously, since we ran this back in 2011 or 12 or so, um, I think we ran this one in 2000. Uh, maybe the cams were done in 2011 or the heads were done in 2011. But um, if you want to rev it way out, you need a shorter runner manifold like the Boss. But now there are other ones. There's the, the Cobra Jet and even the factory late model intake works very well. Kind of a good combination. But now let's take a look and see what happened when we installed the ported heads on this combination. After talking a little bit about the previous upgrades on our Gen 1 5 liter Coyote motor with the cams and the JLT and obviously testing the Boss intake, it was time to install the CNC ported heads. These heads came from JPC and RGR. These were stage one heads, meaning that they had the factory valve sizes. They had been CNC ported, which we were told improved the flow rate of the heads from a little less than 300 all the way up to 330 CFM. So that's enough to support, you know, way over 660 horsepower if we use our 2 CFM per horsepower rule. So that's more than enough flow to make a lot of power, obviously a lot more than we were going to make here. So we wanted to see, you know, even the factory heads probably could support, according to the airflow, could support the power level that we were at. So we were interested to see how much the extra airflow was going to be offered by the cylinder heads. We obviously upgraded the valve springs um, previously, even though these this was a, a set of NSR cams. We upgraded the valve springs because we had plans to install other camshafts after this and run wilder cam timing, trying to make even more and more power, which we eventually did. But for right now, we installed these ported heads, obviously with ARP head studs and stuff, um, and all that worked out well. But here's what happened when we installed the ported heads. And this was still with the stock intake manifold. So as we can see, the power picked up from 515 horsepower up to 545 horsepower. So basically we picked up a good solid 30 horsepower run with the factory intake manifold. As you can see, the ported heads were kind of worth power uh, almost everywhere and it kind of increased with engine speed, which is what we would expect of a, of a good airflow increase like with the ported heads. The interesting thing is if you look at the shape of the curve, um, it didn't really change where this thing made peak power. I think it shifted peak, well, it didn't really shift peak power the peak power RPM at all. They both made it at 6,600 RPM and they both made the peak torque, peak torque on the port or on the, um, yeah, on the ported heads was up to 474 foot pounds. So again, it was making good torque for a coyote, which is something that they say that the coyote doesn't do. But if you look at the specific torque output of the four valve motor, it's actually very, very good for a five liter displacement. I mean, that's an impressive deal. Think about if you had a stock five liter Mustang engine, the older style, you know, the Fox chassis one, and you were making 474 foot pounds of torque naturally aspirated, that'd be a lot of power. <laughs> that'd be a good combination. But here's what happened. Obviously we didn't stop there. So we did the same thing that we did previously. We had run the, we also ran the boss intake manifold with the ported heads. And here's what happened when we ran the boss intake manifold, just like before as it had with the stock heads, the boss intake made uh, more power and it made 571 horsepower. Although honestly, it was still climbing at a rate of about three horsepower per hundred RPM. So we should have run this thing farther out. And we eventually did with the bigger cams and, and it, it, uh, it obviously made more power. I think this thing would have gone 575 or so had I run it to 7,500. We were getting a little bit concerned this was very early on, obviously, in the ownership of these Coyote motors. We were told that we should be worried maybe a little bit about the oil pump. Um, and I think that they mentioned um, the chains as well. But so we were a little conservative. I wanted this thing to last a long time. We had um, a lot of testing that we did with this particular motor. So I obviously didn't want to we didn't want to hurt something, but in retrospect, I, I should have <laughs> ran it out higher. But the interesting thing, if you remember from our previous discussion, that the crossover point between the boss intake and the stock intake uh, with the stock heads was 6100 rpm but now with the ported head the crossover point was stretched out 6500 rpm meaning that the with the ported head the stock intake was actually um making power more power than the boss intake for more for a bigger rpm stretch an extra 400 rpm so you'd have to be really pressed to want to make peak power higher in the RPM range with something like the Boss. But again, 
maybe the boss wouldn't be the ideal choice probably would be better to go with a cobra jet or maybe even a a, a late model gen 3 kind of intake manifold because i think that that would be a better overall package because obviously in this what you'd want is a dual runner intake <laughs> so you could have all the low speed torque offered by the short runner factory style intake manifold and then the top end offered by a short runner boss style intake manifold that would be a good combination Let's get to our conclusion. Okay, guys, what'd you think about our cylinder head test comparing the factory head to the CNC ported factory head on our early Gen 1 Coyote? It's obvious that ported heads, the motor definitely responds to the extra airflow, and that's not surprising. I mean, Ford did this on the later versions. They put heads on that flow much better than these early Gen 1 heads, so porting them was definitely worth extra power. The other thing that I liked is the ported heads showed power gains both with the factory intake and with the boss intake. So really it comes down to this, where do you want to make power? If you want power below 6,500 RPM and you want all that extra torque, obviously the factory intake is definitely the way to go. If you want to rev the motor out, make lots and lots of power, but sacrifice power down low, then the boss intake works very well. So that's more a function of the intake manifold, but just know a ported head works well, with both those intakes. Now to the camshafts. I have these cams available. I'm gonna go ahead and put the specs up here so you guys can see it. I'm also going to put up my email address. So if you're interested in these cams that I've had for quite a while, I use them for a test way back in 2011 or 2012. So I've had them for a long time, but they work well and they did make lots and lots of power. So I put the specs up, I put the email address up, send me a note, let me know if you're interested in them. I'll sell them basically to the highest bidder. And all I'm doing is using that money to support the channel so I can get more junkyard motors and do more dyno testing. I'm Richard Holder, guys. Make sure to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell. Hit me up if you want the cams. Thanks for watching.